ATS. ATS uh, is uh, a syndrome that consists of uh, capillary malformation, uh, atypical vein, uh, uh, not typical varicose vein, but atypical <coughs> vein, uh, bone and soft tissue hypertension. What are the causes of KTS? Uh, essentially, we don't really know what causes KTS. Uh, there is a sporadic uh, uh, phenomenon that uh, it is attributed to be a sporadic phenomenon, and there is suggestion of chromosomal uh, uh, abnormalities, and uh, specifically chromosome number four. So, uh, what are the clinical data? <coughs> the largest uh, uh, clinical based data that we have is uh, accumulation of the clinical data, the Mayo Clinic, my alma mater, um, from 1956 to 1995. Um, and about, uh, the distribution was 116 females and 136 uh, uh, males uh, between age of, uh, from birth to 83 years of age. Uh, KT is found uh, diagnosed at birth, uh, about 90, uh, person at a time and uh, fourth one is stain is found in 98% of those patients. Varicosity is about 72% and uh, limb length discrepancy and hypertrophy in 67%. Now in order to diagnose the uh, KTS, uh, at least two features have to be present. 63% uh, of the patients have, have all three uh, features of KT and 37% have only two features. A typical vein that we see in Lopatronine syndrome, the salient of which is uh, the lateral embryonic vein of the cervical. So when you examine the patient with KTS, in the lateral aspect of the leg, there is a prominent vein and that vein is called the lateral embryonic vein of the cerebral. There is a syndrome called Parks-Weber syndrome that needs to be distinguished from KTS. If you look at the internet, you will see KT, Clopatronani, Weber syndrome. There really is no such syndrome. Parks-Weber syndrome is what has an arterial venous, venous malformation which distinguishes from Clopatronani syndrome which does not have uh, ABM. And that is a very important distinction. Uh, a patient with Parks-Weber syndrome could develop congestive heart failure because of the high flow element of that lesion, whereas KTS uh, does not have that. Uh, people usually come and ask us, if, is there anything in the family that gave rise to this? Did we do something wrong? Or what was there what was something that preceded this? There usually is no family history of KTS. Um, uh, and there is really no difference between I'm actually the different manifestation of a KTS in females versus males. So what are some other uh, abnormalities or congenital syndromes? that can be associated with KT. Hip development is most common. Uh, and this can be different from very mild to very grotesque and severe. Uh, then there are some digital abnormalities, and this could be web fingers, or it could be uh, increase in number of the fingers, or abnormality in terms of its uh, having dysmorphic features of the, of the dig digits, etc. And then KT can be associated with the Serge Weber syndrome, can be associated with other uh, abnormalities. But there are a couple of items that I need to talk about, and that is uh, when, you, when you read the literature, they talk about a scoliosis associated with KT. That actually is not the case. The scoliosis that is seen in, in, in KT, it is not a true disease. What it really is, it is an adjustment phenomenon. In other words, when when the, it becomes difficult to move the limb, then there is that curvature as a, as a mechanism of uh, compensation. And that curvature, it is uh, really not a permanent uh, uh, curvature or defined as a scoliosis. 
which is actually by, by the way just as common in KTS patient as it is in the rest of the population. Another element that I was going to talk about is osteoporosis. Now, in most patients with KTS, there is no osteoporosis. However, in the cervical uh, variety, which is the variety in which the limb that is affected by KT, actually it is not large at all. It is very small and it is atrophic. And those patients are prone to fracture and uh, an osteoporosis as a cause. So what are the signs and symptoms of KTS? Pain, bleeding, swelling of the limbs, and description symptoms of the length of the, of the associated uh, affected uh, limb. Uh, and it can be an uh, environment of the uh, bone and soft tissue and a skin disorders. Causes of pain in KTS. Now, um, the limb for venous insufficiency. Oftentimes we talk about chronic venous insufficiency. As a vascular consultant, uh, I see venous system and lymphatic system as a continuum. In other words, the lymphatics will pick up where the veins have left off. Patients with KTS usually have this combined problem. And they have abnormality of the vein and the lymphatics. In fact, in, in cases of patients who do not have severe uh, chronic venous insufficiency or ulcerations of the leg, if you palpate their leg, you will see kind of, an, it, 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 kind of a moisture on the, on the surface of the skin. And that is actually lymphatic drainage and not the drainage from the chronic venous insufficiency. That is a, a very important distinction to make. Another element is venous claudication. Usually when we talk about claudication, we talk about arterial insufficiency, an old man who has been a smoker, hypertensive, diabetic, what have you, walks with his wife and says, you know, let me step in here so I can look at this window and the next window because to, to, in order to catch, to, in order to be able to get some rest to move on because of the pain. In the case of patients with KTS, the claudication that we see it is not arterial, it is venous. Because of the fact that there is venous hypertension in the lower extremities and retention of fluid in the leg, these patients will actually have chronic pain because of the venous insufficiency and retention of fluid. Another element is calf, uh, calf muscle pump dysfunction. Now, these are the people that may have actually very normal uh, venous valve because the most common cause of chronic venous insufficiency is abnormality and damage that has occurred to the venous valve. Well, in this case, we don't necessarily need to have abnormality of the valve. The valves may be functioning relatively properly. But what you don't have is abnormality of the muscle. Muscle needs to pump for the veins to be squeezed. If you do not have a good pump, that blood is not going to go anywhere. So that is a very important component in patients with KTS, which is malfunction. Then there is the stasis, uh, stasis dermatitis, an inflammatory condition that sets in secondary to chronic venous insufficiency. Then the lipodermatosclerosis, which is basically uh, fibrosis and scarring of the subcutaneous tissue um, and the fat. 